Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Again, this is your pastor, Bishop Morris C. Smith, and I'm glad to greet you uh, today in the name of Jesus. As we continue um, our month of solemn assembly uh, in the new year of 2022, and in particular, uh, this uh, section of teaching uh, called Living a Life in the Spirit. And as you all know, has been following this, we are using Jesus Christ really as our example uh, of living life in the spirit and living an obedient life. You know, obedient life sounds um, very common, but it's not. And it's one that uh, we have to learn uh, and relearn and commit and recommit to. Uh, the essence of obedience is really um, doing, uh, embracing and doing the will of another. When it comes to spiritual matters, it means that we have decided to go totally contrary to our old nature. The old nature uh, in Adam is by nature a rebellious nature. It's a nature uh, of independence. Uh, it's a nature that uh, is often encouraged uh, by this world's philosophy because we are taught early on uh, in some with good measure as it comes to secular living that we should not be dependent on anyone. We should be uh, mature, independent people. But again, in Christ, let's be clear and understand the spiritual life of living life in the spirit is living a life that is dependent on God that in fact desires and seeks uh, to embrace the will of God and not our own will. That is a life again of obedience and one that we do willingly and uh, without reservation because we believe that uh, in Christ is all that we need. And so I encourage you, if you have not continued to join with us this month, uh, this week, as we focus on <clears throat> Christ and his obedience uh, in, in those examples through scripture, philosophically and practically, uh, how to live life in the spirit, uh, being obedient as Christ was. Again, thank you for praying for us as we uh, have almost totally recovered from uh, a very mild case of COVID-19. It did allow me to, again, spend more time uh, in reading uh, and studying. And, uh, and so, again, my wife sends her love and, and me, my, myself as well. We have to miss one of our leadership conferences uh, this week uh, in the U.S. Uh, Virgin Islands in St. Thomas. Some of our friends are there, Sam Chan and others, but we'll catch up with them another time. So, again, let's get right back into it. At the beginning of this week, we dealt again uh, on Monday with obedience to Christ. Uh, and we looked at scriptures uh, that were found in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 8. And then on Tuesday, uh, the, the depth of Christ's obedience, uh, when it talked about him uh, in Philippians. In the Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, is a part of our teaching tonight as well. It shows, again, the depth uh, of Christ's obedience. And the paraphrase is that although he was fully God, he did not demand as a man to be known as God, but he emptied himself. He humbled himself uh, and he found, he committed himself to be found in the lowest form from fully God to fully man. And then he came not only as fully man, but as a servant. Uh, and then he humbled himself, so powerful. He was not forced to do it. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death uh, of the cross. That's part of the teaching tonight. And, and that issue of, again, the cost of Christ's obedience, the cost of Christ's obedience and the depth uh, of Christ's obedience in particular uh, is found in Philippians in a scriptural way, in a spiritual way. But I want to read to you also, along with, as I've also already quoted, Colossians 2 and 8, the practical uh, manifestation of that commitment of obedience that Christ demonstrated and what it cost him. And to do that, I'm going to read again from a very familiar passage. Uh, it's found in Luke, uh, Luke uh, chapter 22 and verses um, 39 through 45. Let me read those to you in the King James Version. Again, Luke uh, 22 uh, verses 39 and 45. It reads this way. And he came out, talking about Jesus, from the upper room, the Last Supper. He came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said to them, 
pray that you enter not into temptation. Remember, he's the 12, he celebrates the Lord's Supper with them. He comes out and then he goes to a familiar place called Gethsemane. He takes with him the inner circle, Peter, James, and John. He told them, to, please watch with me as I pray. Notice, in his humanness, he trusts his closest friends, the 12 first, and then the, those who are most intimate and close to him, the three, Peter, James, and John, he knows he's going to go through a great trial. He asked them to watch and pray. But as you know, they went to sleep. Let's read further. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and he kneeled down and prayed, saying, look at this, Father, if, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy be done. And the Bible says, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Now the Bible says in Matthew, he did this three times, but the angel came to strengthen him. But look at the, the intricate part of this passage in verse number 44. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He was in agony. He was in great spiritual struggle, so deep, so costly, that it was manifested physically. Great uh, sweat, like great drops of blood. He was in such a spiritual struggle, a wrestling in the spirit, knowing God's will, but also knowing the cost of it, the pain and suffering. He as a human being knew it was a great debt and he needed help. Fall now to the ground. And in verse 45, and when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. He found them sleeping for sorrow. Jesus demonstrates the cost of obedience. He made a commitment, but as he approached it, he felt it emotionally. He felt it psychologically. He felt it in his human frame, just like you and I. The Bible says he was tempted in all points, like as we are, yet without sin. What does it tell, say to us? It says that we're going to have to go through some deep things too, but never alone. The cost we must pay is the suffering that we go through. The Bible is very clear there that he went through this in suffering. But again, the passage in Hebrews chapter 5 says he learned obedience through what he suffered. So we just read Luke, the Gethsemane passage. Let's read it in the NIV in Hebrews uh, chapter five, verses seven and eight. It reads this way. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears, loud cries and tears. He was in human emotional agony to the one who could save him from death. He now is offered as a human being, cried out to the father who he knew who could deliver him from death. And this is very powerful. He was heard because of his reverent submission. Again, the NIV says, he cried with loud cries and tears and petitions to the God who was able to deliver him from death. And he was heard. God heard them. God acquiesced to his cry. Why? Because of how the Lord went through this obedience, this test. It says there, because of his reverent submission. It says there that although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. His reverent obedience. So in Gethsemane, he is beseeching the Lord. And then Hebrews teaches us that in that chasm, in that deep depth of his own unableness, his weakness in his flesh, he submits to God and he asks for deliverance, but he asks only for God's will to be done. He was willing to go through. And what is always to me very humbling, the word there says, he, he learned obedience. He was heard because he was willing to learn. 
Brothers and sisters, let's be honest. Obedience, Christ learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Can we even hope or think or imagine that we can become more obedient in any less of a cost? He learned it through agony. He learned it through wrestling in the spirit. He learned it fighting the old nature who never wants to submit to God. But his spiritual obedience, his rep, look at that, his reverent submission. We cannot just submit to God in a teeth gritting, okay, I'll do it way. No, God teach us to love you so much that we will learn obedience. We'll go through our suffering because we love you and we're obedient to you reverently with awe, knowing that God's way is not our way that his way is so much better than our way. Jesus the Christ learned obedience. We must take Jesus as, again, our model and example of obedience. And we can do it if we do it with submission. And listen, I'm, I'll say this over and over again throughout Solemn Assembly in this entire year. One of the concepts and the dynamic spiritual applications the Lord keeps on pushing to my heart, mind, and spirit is this. Brothers and sisters, we must not only learn to do this as individuals. The key to our success is to read the scripture, hear the voice of God as a community, community obedience, that we can galvanize our forces together and say, we will learn what God wants together. And we will co-sign it, not as individualistic submission, but we'll do it as a people. Can you imagine the power of God that will be manifested if all of us stop giving in to this human religious need to do our own thing, so convinced that we are right and our way is God's way? No, it must be a learned spiritual obedience through the Holy Spirit and the word of God as we do it together reverent submission. You can do it. I can do it. We can do it. We do it by the grace of God. And I believe that the year 2022 will bring us great challenge, but also great accolades in the spirit that if we embrace the nature of Jesus Christ as our example, if we seek and ask the Lord, Lord, give me that deep desire to be more like Jesus and to convince others through my obedience to join us together in obedience. Do not draw back this to all of our leaders. I appeal to the leaders of our church, my brothers and sisters. God has called us to the kingdom for a time like this to demonstrate his greatness and his glory, his authority and his power. I'm not just speaking words to you that are philosophical. They are pragmatic. And when I contracted COVID, I said, why is this happening to me? The Lord said, because you want to be an example and do not fear it. As I have been obedient to what God has said to me about this pandemic, he has shown me that his truth, when it's embraced and demonstrated, gives us safety and power. I don't know what has bewitched many of us to not be vaccinated. When I say us, I mean humankind. Brothers and sisters, we must understand that we must do this together as a people of God, and the people of God must be the example to the world. Please, commit yourself this year to be not only spiritual, but maturely spiritual in the Holy Spirit, embracing the teachings, we do it together. Again, it's my plan to do some teachings in a practical way uh, in the days to come about fasting, about prayer, as we talk about living life in the Spirit, using Christ as our example. Again, God's hand be upon you. I say it every week because it's true. Sister Smith sends her concern and her love. She has been, again, a great example of how to walk with Christ through this pandemic. I've seen her, her growth in the Lord, her maturity, her insights, sometimes beyond my own, have served to me as really an example and again as a directive how to walk with God. Hey, we're praying for you as you pray for us. I encourage you. 
there's a need that you may have, or you're, you're not sure about something, don't, don't get upset. Don't be angry. Call the church. If you have to call more than once, do that. If you don't get one person, they don't answer you, call another leader. Be persistent, but in the spirit of Christ. And let's overcome the enemy together. Again, God's prayer to you that he's given me as a privilege as your pastor. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be graced unto you. The Lord of his countenance upon you, your children and your children's children, and give you peace, give you shalom, give you wholeness, and give you life in Jesus' name. God use you and God bless you.